The brain is such a powerful thing, it takes in information and analyzes it accordingly. But what happens when the brain begins to make up its own information? How can you tell what is real from what is not? Imagine sitting comfortably in your chair when a loved one enters the room. Whether it be a brother or sister, a husband or wife, maybe a parent. You've seen them countless times before, but this time is different. This time there's just something not right about them. They're no longer who you thought you knew and loved. They're an imposter. They're an exact clone of their former self. This is called the Capgra delusion, caused by a number of different possible factors such as head trauma or pre-existing mental conditions. Capgras delusion is a relentless disorder that is more than capable of tearing a once manageable home life into chaos. Sufferers find themselves unable to trust people they once loved so dearly. The Capgras delusion is so bizarre in itself that it was thought to be a rare condition, but medical professionals are coming to find that it might be more common than they once suspected. The disorder was discovered in 1923 and named after Joseph Capgras, a French psychiatrist. Joseph had examined a woman by the name of Madame M. This woman's delusion went far beyond the belief that her husband had a double. In fact, Madame M believed that her husband had numerous imposters, which would sometimes step in to replace another whenever he left the room. At the time of her examination, she had claimed to have over 80 husbands, all of which were different from each other in ways only she could identify. Capgras syndrome has been known to extend to the belief that friends or even pets are imposters. And while it affects both genders, it is much more prevalent in women. The Capgras delusion is manageable with treatment. It may sound like it's straight out of a movie, but it is possible for one of your hands to take on a mind of its own, and it's called Alien Hand Syndrome. Discovered by German neuropsychiatrist Kurt Goldstein in 1908, Alien Hand Syndrome is a disorder which causes a person's hand to perform actions without the person being aware of it until they see it or the hand affects them in some way. Like the Capgras delusion, alien hand syndrome is a result of either brain trauma or a pre-existing mental condition. Though most cases only involve a person's hand reaching or grasping for things on its own, there are cases that are a bit more severe. Some cases of alien hand syndrome have been known to reach levels of being abusive, either to its own body or to others. Sometimes this may be pinching, jabbing, or choking. Sometimes the abuse is more sexual and can land the sufferer in hot water if the hand decides to grope someone standing nearby. When the hand decides to move itself, there really isn't much the person can do other than restrain it with their other hand. People have reported that the alien hand will unbutton their shirts while they're trying to button it, or they might stub out a cigarette just as the other hand had lit it. Some cases have even reported that the rogue hand has attempted to strangle its host with a cord. But while this disorder may seem a bit humorous to some, it couldn't be further from it. Those who suffer with this condition struggle every day to conquer a disorder with no cure. Their lives are constantly adjusted to revolve around their condition, a condition a majority of people don't even know exists. This leads some people to resort to voluntary self-harm. Without a cure for alien hand syndrome, sufferers are expected to utilize strenuous mental effort, as well as employ a number of techniques to keep the rogue hand occupied, such as constantly holding something within it. Though some people's conditions will gradually diminish over time, some people are cursed to suffer with an uncontrollable hand for the rest of their lives. You may be a fan of The Walking Dead, but that's not real, right? It's just television. While if perception is reality, then some people believe that zombies are much more than a work of fiction. Luckily for us, walking corpse syndrome doesn't turn anyone into the living dead, but if you were to ask someone suffering from it, they'd insist otherwise. A person with walking corpse syndrome may in truth be very much alive, but in their own minds, they believe that they are dead. Some see themselves as rotting and putrefying as they go about their lives. 
Walking corpse syndrome, also known as Qatar's delusion, is thought to be related to Copgras syndrome, in which the brain has trouble recognizing faces. While the Copgras delusion believes that people are simply imposters, walking corpse syndrome believes that no one is identifiable anymore at all. So the sufferer believes that they must be dead, but this isn't always the case. Jules Qatar was the first to describe the disorder in 1880, and had discovered that the condition had noticeable levels of severity, from a mild state which would involve despair and self-loathing, to an extreme state which would involve intense delusions and severe depression. Some people would even believe that they were immortal. But Jules wouldn't be the first to have a run-in with walking corpse syndrome. Almost 100 years earlier, Charles Bonnet, a Genevan naturalist and writer, came into contact with a woman who had apparently had a stroke. When she regained the ability to speak and move again, she insisted that her children dress her in a shroud and put her in a coffin. Obviously, they were hesitant, but after she continuously demanded her family, friends, and other acquaintances treat her as if she were dead, she was prepared and laid out at her wake so her loved ones could mourn for her. They found this difficult as the woman kept complaining about her attire and the whiteness of her linen. She eventually fell asleep and was put to bed. Her disorder had eventually diminished and she returned to normal, but every few months the condition would return and she would believe that she was dead once more. Fortunately, walking corpse syndrome is treatable, that is, if the person believes that they can be brought back to life. So before you get angry with your brain for forgetting something as you run out the door, or perhaps being unable to recall an important question on a test, take it a bit easy. Things could be much, much worse, and you never know when your brain might turn on you. That's all for now. Remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. I'm Rob Dyke, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Please show the artists of this series some love by subscribing to our YouTube channel linked in the description below. Also, don't forget to click subscribe on my channel because you won't want to miss what's next.